There's not now an enormous number of opportunities to publish out there, not all of them in high quality journals. And what we're trying to do here is focus on getting you to publish in a high quality journal. So how do we define a high quality journal? Well, that's one that's not predatory and we'll talk about that in a moment. One that provides its authors with a decent service, one that's well respected and one that is read by your target audience. And sometimes that means not only publishing in a high quality journal but looking at the grey literature as well. And what I mean by that is perhaps professional magazines where some of your applied work, some of the applied aspects of your work uh, will sit nicely and reach the end users. So predatory open access publishing is a reasonably recent phenomena uh, and I think it's best defined as an exploitative open access academic publishing business model. It involves charging publication fees uh, to authors to get them into print but really you don't get any of the high quality peer review or background services that you'd expect with Journal of Physiology, Experimental Physiology uh, and any physiology journals associated with the PhysSoc. So here's just one example of the kind of subterfuge that goes on um, with this type of journal. This is from a friend of mine, Professor Stuart Biddle, and this is a, it's a tweet from the 29th of May. Uh, this is the Journal of Sports Science. Let me extend my sincere greeting to you. I have learned your research. Um, this journal is a predatory journal and not a genuine journal. The genuine journal uh, is the Journal of Sports Sciences. This is the Journal of Sports Science. So we need to be a little bit careful because it's very easy to get sucked into um, dealing with some of these predatory journals. There are various ways you can check. If you're a young researcher, the best thing to do is to talk to your mentors and your supervisors and those that you work with to give you an idea of those journals. There have been lists published. Um, some of them are no longer current, such as Bill's list of predatory journals, but others have taken their place. So you can do a little bit of background research to make sure that you don't uh, end up getting pulled into this exploitative business model. The other thing you can check is that the journal is uh, associated with a reputable publisher and most journals, and particularly those of the Physiological Society, you'll find that there um, is a high level of author support services. And when we give this presentation to audiences, I always at this stage ask the question, how many people in the audience have gone on to a journal website, Experimental Physiology, Journal of Physiology website, um, to do other than either look at a paper or to upload a paper and very few people use sadly the author services that sit on these websites. So this is from Experimental Physiology. Journal of Physiology will take you into the the same set of services. There's a whole range of things there to help you get published in high quality journals. So author services, publish journey articles, find a journal, prepare, submit, licensing, then how to then market and publicize your, your, your journal article. So spend a bit of time just having a look at these services and journal resources. Now, I don't want to spend a great amount of time talking about um, indices of journals because um, they've tended to dominate the field for some time. Um, but you can go on to various websites to get the details of individual journals. So here's the data for um, experimental physiology, showing the impact factor, the citation distribution, and these are all useful pieces of information that should guide you but not determine necessarily what you'll do. Um, we've become rather um, obsessed with impact factor in recent years, but it's always worth remembering that that was a tool that was originally produced for librarians to identify which journals to buy. Um, its citation distributions are highly skewed uh, and generally you can conclude that science is currently rated by a process, if it just is based on impact factors, um, by a process that is itself unscientific, subjective and secretive. And the problem with impact factors is, as Kim and I 
uh, could do very easily is you can game these impact factors just to artificially increase them without actually providing any better quality um, articles or any better um, author support. So be wary. And the other thing to note is that um, the impact factor is not the only um, index. There are a whole range of other index, immediacy index, cited half light, eigenfactor, score. So um, by all means use these indices, but use them in the round and not to make the decision for you, but to guide your independent decision.